Welcome. Uh, we have for right now, our interview is with Aram Armstrong. He's running for county council seat for Makawao, Paia, and Haiku. Uh, welcome, Aram. Nice to have you with us. And could you give us a little bit about your background and why you feel qualified to run for this very important county council seat? Mahalo, Paul, and mahalo everyone who's assembled here, Maui Pana Network, thank you. Um, first question, why why run, why this seat, why now, uh, why me? Um, well, that's maybe four questions. Um, why I feel I'm qualified to run for this seat um, and, and excited, uh, there's, a, there's several reasons, so I'm gonna unpack this. Uh, first, I know this island because I grew up here um, and I know the challenges of growing up here uh, when when uh, housing is hard to find. Um, I grew up, my, my, so my mother brought me here uh, by herself um, back in 79. And being a single mom in Maui is not easy. Uh, we moved all around the island. Uh, I've lived in uh, as far as Napili, uh, Kula, but mainly in Kihei. Um, my mom brought me up to Pukulani to go to middle school because uh, Lokulani at the time didn't have any science teachers. So I also know the challenges of our public education system and what kind of creativity it takes to navigate that system. Uh, I'm one of the lucky ones who went off, uh, had a career. Uh, I've lived in the US, San Francisco. Um, that was where my first job was for a company called IDEO. Uh, then I moved to China with them, spent a couple of years in, in China, having that experience, seeing how fast that place moved and that energy. Uh, I then moved to Hong Kong and got to understand that, that kind of culture. Um, but my favorite place that I want to bring some in, some lessons from um, in terms of government and what excites me uh, is Singapore, uh, the Singaporean model around education and civil service. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of a geek around uh, uh, organizational change and transformation uh, and systems thinking. And Maui is this beautiful context that I feel at home with and I see so much untapped potential. Um, what Singapore, what the Singaporean government did is they created the system where they would send their best and brightest students off to college, be it Oxford or Stanford or Yale, and then they'd bring them back. And so they'd have a full ride scholarship and then a guaranteed job when they came back. Uh, and so that feedback cycle uh, made this uh, evolution of Singapore possible. They went from a fishing village to the best place to do business in Asia. Um, and so that's, that's there's, there's a lot of models out there. Um, I'm inspired. My personal passion is around mobility. Uh, and so uh, I'd like to, love to talk more about that. Um, I'm just a big geek about systems and Maui is a, the most beautiful living system. Uh, and so I wanna, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm really stoked for this so, opportunity. Uh, Arm, how would that, particularly then that vision that you have from that experience, how would that actually translate into our county and our county governance. Uh, how would you see that integrating in? How would you go about helping to make that happen? Right, so uh, so the county, uh, so the, there's, the, I'm still learning all the things that the county can do versus the state can do, but I've been uh, working with uh, a group called Transforming Hawaii's Food System Together. I've been working with UH Maui on bringing STEM professionals to become STEM teachers in Hawaii. Uh, what the county uh, could and should be doing is making it more accessible for the folks that we need to be here, uh, healthcare workers, teachers. Uh, my mom has to go to Oahu uh, for her healthcare. Uh, we have a big, everyone knows this, so I, I don't think we need to belabor uh, the housing crisis, um, but there is, uh, That is, yeah, <laughs> like where do, you, where do you start with the housing crisis? Uh, what can Maui County do? Uh, I think we need to, hmm. we need to, this is, this is where I need to listen to more people. Um, I think, uh, so, how, so let me speak from experience. So I've been through HUD housing. Um, it is extremely difficult to get HUD housing. Um, when my mother uh, had to leave Maui because it became so difficult to find a place to move to, she moved to DC where, where my sister was living. In DC, it was like a concierge service. And so people want to take your, your, your uh, voucher. Uh, you just sign up and people are like, can I help you get a house? 
here people don't want HUD housing um, folks. Uh, there's a there's a big gap in uh, I guess customer service to put it lightly. Um, I think customer service, as in listening to what the problems are, looking for the root causes, and uh, using uh, lean, like using process, human-centered design process, um, different tools for optimizing how we become uh, more human-centered, more Aloha-inspired uh, uh, as we try to deliver services to our community. And so I think transparency and how uh, our system's working, how long is the, the, the line for the housing or the water, the, the water meter, like setting up systems for creating transparency would be once one initial start. Um, okay. I think the county's done a little bit of, um, they, there's been a lot, little bit of progress. Um, a big thing has been shifting to Zoom and blue jeans. And so uh, I think the, well, good. This... Well, well, like we are right now, right now yeah. on Zoom and, uh, and, and what I will do is I will have, uh, Asia Iyer will ask the next questions and maybe uh, you can ask a little bit more specific things about maybe some of the housing or other things in our county. I would love to ask about housing, but um, what I would really like to ask about, Aram, uh, sorry to kind of detract from your last question, is about your work in environmental policy and uh, environmental sustainability and uh, responsibility here on Maui. Do you have some experience with that? And what do you think you could bring to the table as a council member? Uh, my experience is as a volunteer. Um, in high school, I volunteered with the Eco Action Club, and we went up to Waikamoi Forest for, uh, to cut down invasive species. More recently, I've been working with Maui Wetlands, uh, and I'm their Ahu Pua surveillance uh, drone guy. Um, so I, I show up as a, as a volunteer, as a storyteller, uh, to show the, the big picture of what's happening in, in our uh, eco ecosystem. Uh, I was lucky enough to be uh, at the site in Kihei uh, the week before that big Kona Lo came through. Uh, and so I had um, footage of our, our wetlands, the one across from St. Teresa's, uh, just before the storm came. And then after the storm, you saw this like coal, like everything changed. It was like chocolate milk in the ocean and it, it really uh, told the story of why we need uh the systems that were in place before um <laughs> before folks like me got here uh the the the, the lo local ia the fish ponds were, were catching the sediments before they got into the ocean so they're protecting the reefs and there's a bunch of systems in place that have been bulldozed over people don't know that kihei is a wetland uh, i grew up in kihei i've been back in those i've made mud pies back there uh, i've ridden my bmx back there so i know um, and also you look at it from the sky a little bit, uh, you'll start to be just like, it blows your mind uh, how much of Kihei is actually uh, a flood zone. Every time we have, um, we haven't had too many recently, but uh, the tsunami warnings uh, scare the living bejesus out of me because um, there's, it's, it's really constrained. Uh, there's, there's very few exit pathways from Kihei uh, and people tend to just you know, head for the hills, but there's not that many ways up the hill. Um, I guess uh, in terms of uh, the, the ecosystem, uh, what I bring is, uh, I, I, there's, so we have like the Western thought of, how do I do this in a way that's uh, accessible? Anyways, I, I, like to, I like to make problems visible. I like to use uh, visual frameworks. Uh, I use the metaphor of a macroscope. So you have the telescope that helps you see in the far distance. You have a microscope to look at things uh, very detailed. The macroscope helps you see the big picture. So imagine that ahupua view of our system. Uh, how do we have this overview of what the carrying capacity is of this island? If we don't know how much fuel is on this island, how much water is evaporating in the system, how can we properly steer the ship? It's a very, it seems impossible, you, uh, or at least not very wise. So what I'm hearing from you is that you feel that with the county acquiring better data, perhaps looking at the through a macroscope and uh, taking more of an ahapua'a view of uh, environment that we could address these things uh, better. And I guess what I would like to ask, uh, if I heard you right, is that what you're, thank you for where you're heading? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so what do you think the county council could do? Do you have anything specific, not all of the things the county council could do, but is there anything specific uh, that you'd like to see the council with you as member, uh, 
do to uh, bring us closer to that? Yes. So data is the most, data is not the most important. If, well, <laughs> let, let's not overemphasize the, the, the importance of data, but data is very important. Um, I think we need to have a balance of data and intuition uh, to manage, but without data, it's you're really just kind of gut feel. You don't really have proof or fact. Uh, so I have a, an idea for how we start to, one, kind of monitor the, or in, I think there's, you know, carrot and sticks. How do you get people to share um, what what they want to do? How do you lead them on a path that is going to be the best experience for them visiting on this island? Uh, I like to call it the Holo Holo Pass. Um, and you would just get free Wi-Fi or something that would uh, incentivize you to be a part of this program uh, that would be run by the county. So we'd have better visitor data of when you're at uh, McKenna Beach or when you're um, going off to Hana. We would just have a sense of how many visitors are uh, at these different choke points or, or very important spots, culturally significant spots on the island. And that gives us the pulse. And so I'd want to identify where these kind of key uh, pulse points of the island and see how we can, um, yeah, have a better sense of how, how people are moving across the island. And if there were um, county services, uh, I think mobility is a huge one. And, and I don't know how many, how many terms in office it would take for us to uh, improve our county bus system. But mobility is a, a big passion of mine. Uh, I, I live in Makawao and I commute to Pukalani uh, to drop off my Hanai son at daycare. And I would love to be able to do that on a bicycle, but I can't. Uh, that just seems kind of crazy. But um, uh, so I would, I would just love for us to make uh, the island a bit more accessible in different ways, whether it's by bus, by bike, by ferry. Uh, I heard from uh, last, last night I was talking uh, to, to some of the council members and I heard that um, someone wants, Larry Ellison wants to buy the ferry. Um, and that would be, that would then put uh, a very essential asset of how we get through Maui County um, in the hands of a private party, which seems kind of risky. Um, yeah, so I, I think the county could do a, a more proactive job around uh, being the better alternative to having a car. Uh, it's an island, so there's only so much you can do, but there are, um, there's definitely ways. I did, I talked to Robert uh, at the event last night uh, and he uses MEO to go uh, from his house in Haiku to work in, at the Kula Botanical Gardens. And it works. You just don't know exactly if you're a half hour too early or half hour too late when the bus arrives. So the systems exist, we just need to adopt them. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. On to the next. Okay, great. Mark Joyner will be asking the next questions. Okay, aloha. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, sure, appreciate it. Um, so looking at, at your district there uh, with uh, Makawao, uh, Paia Haiku, and uh, Pukulani, um, what would you... Yes. Oh, okay. That's uh, Yuki. Oh, okay. Hi, oh. Yuki. Okay. Um, what would you consider to be um, the number one issue uh, mm -hmm. in your district? Uh, maybe, maybe the number one and number two issue, and maybe the uh, what kinds of things can you do with those issues? Yeah, I do think I think uh, traffic is challenging. Um, I'm just right around from Kalama Intermediate, and so uh, that there, are, <laughs> I don't appreciate the the the. Uh, what is the, the the roundabout being done right now? That seems like the wrong time in the wrong place for a roundabout. But we could use a roundabout right here at the at the exit of um uh oh no not um I'm afraiding my street but uh bad anyways anyway we so uh I was uh yeah I think mobility uh, is like a big umbrella issue um traffic flow uh I was coming out of Waihei uh, you see the cars getting stuck. Uh, if you go into Pukalani, there's King Kamehameha School, uh, there's uh, Kamehameha School, there's 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 just a bunch of school traffic. And this is like, it's worse on Oahu, but it's getting pretty bad on Maui. So I think that gives a lot of people headaches. Um, I would like to, I, I always pass by the, there's like a, a ranch, the horse, uh, the veterinarian clinic for the horses. Um, so if the Baldwins are watching and they want to uh, open up some Paniola Expressway, 
for horses and bikes to get us between Makwan and uh, Pukulani, that would be amazing. Um, I think also, I mean, people are pretty annoyed about the cyclists coming down the mountain. That seems pretty unregulated. Uh, there have been uh, legal action taken uh, due to injuries. Um, I would, yeah, <laughs> I would like to work with the landowners uh, to provide protected pathways for non-car transit. Um, and so that could be transit going from Haile Miley to Kihei. It could be transit going from, uh, from, from where I am in Makwao down to Paia. It's down to the pineapple fields. Um, so there's, there's a lot of open uh, dirt road. Uh, it's just a matter of managing access to it and doing that in a way that people feel safe and uh, that no one's gonna do uh, silly stuff uh, and make trouble, so. Okay, well, what, what would a, a second issue be for you in uh, your district? Uh, food security, for sure. Um, there was one neighbor in this neighborhood that at the beginning of COVID was growing bok choy in their front yard. And now they're, they're growing okra and they're like my heroes. Uh, they deserve a blue ribbon. Um, we have so much growing potential in Makawao. Uh, I, my neighbors have goats, chickens. Uh, we would have goats and chickens uh, if we could, we're renting. So um, that's that's an issue. Uh, but if, if I had uh, the, if I had the time and space to turn my backyard into uh, a chicken and food food garden, um, I would do that. I think all our, all my neighbors, some of my neighbors are doing better than others. So I think we could maybe do a little competition of food security, who's growing what, uh, who's got the best papayas, who's got the best lemons. I think it's wild that we're growing limes uh, when I can just ask for limes from my neighbor. Uh, so yeah, food security and making everyone's responsibility to be growing at least a little bit and just to get that as uh, a basic fundamental thing that you do. Our friend, uh, Pat Simmons Jr. put in a, a kalo mala uh, about a year ago and we just had our first harvest uh, last week and it's delicious poi. Um, uh, and he gave us like five or six different varieties of things I, that are pretty rare. So um, we get to enjoy that. And uh, I'm composting in the backyard. We got some pallets. There's a bunch of fun projects you can do. So I would really encourage everyone to start a, a food garden. Okay. Great. Okay, thank you. Thanks, our, our next questions will come from Ann. Ann? Aloha, Aaron. Welcome. Mm -hmm. um, nice to meet you. <laughs> so um, my question is, you mentioned in the past that you had some problems with obtaining hub, HUD housing, that there's roadblocks to that in Maui unlike mm. some other places. Um, what what would be your solution or, I mean, or some solutions the to the- solutions. So, <laughs> yes. For mm. the, uh, the affordable um, housing. Well, I'm gonna here. borrow one from my mother since she's been the, the interface for the HUD issue, uh, the undercover HUD inspector, perhaps. Um, I, th I think there could be, I, I don't actually know if there's anyone going out and uh, doing quality control or is there what a HUD inspection or a, a HUD manager would look like? I, I would maybe call them the HUD czar if we talk about czars. Uh, I, there, there's definitely a bias against uh, people with uh, the vouchers, the housing vouchers. And so I wanna understand why that's happening. Uh, I think we need to have a, a conversation of, because for me, the math makes a lot of sense. You have someone who's gonna have guaranteed money to pay the rent. What are you worried about? Uh, are you worried about the people? Do you need to know? Do you need to know the people better? We got. We only got in this house because of good references. Um, thank you, Lehua and Lehua's mom, for the references. Um, it's very challenging. Um, so I want to understand. I mean, I understand the the challenges from uh, a kid wanting to live in a house and not move every year. I want to understand the perspective of the uh, the, la the the landlords and why they're so resistant to HUD vouchers. Because other in other places, uh, it's amazingly attractive and easy to to do hud housing if, uh, so your is it, hud is federal is that correct it is it's federal money it's going federal, but on a, like a local level um how would you make sure that the developers actually delivers promised units whether for like for sale oh, for homes for we're sale. talking about transform okay okay this is fun um because <laughs> <laughs> yeah the housing stock uh, I, so i want part of my platform is around kind of like the village model uh Single family housing is, I believe, uh, something that the building code has 
forced on every foisted on the United States because of the building code. We all live in pretty much single family houses. Um, one of the reasons why I, I uh, I'm working in haiku is uh, they have the village model, and we're, we're trying to create a precedent where multiple families can live under the same roof and have uh, gray water to um, irrigation uh, systems and composting toys and the whole thing that makes it more sustainable to have uh, a village type cooperative type housing situation. Uh, I lived in Denmark for a year and a half. The, the, the co-op buildings there are, are amazing. It's just like a beautiful building with a courtyard in the middle. Uh, so I think the way that we build houses, whether it's tiny house villages um, or <laughs> yeah, uh, I think there's, 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 there's a lot more options available than what we have in terms of multiplex uh, apartments and single family homes. And so I think that it begins with housing stock. It, is this village model, the system that you just uh, advocated for, is that, would that, is that, a, would be consistent with the building codes here? Uh, we're starting, we're looking at ways to create the precedents that uh, enable this to happen with the proper uh, building code permits. Um, Sylvia, my boss and Hanai mother is, uh, uh, she's working with the, the county, the state and the federal folks because we've been re rebuilding for the last year. We got hit by the flood uh, and it washed away a house, two bridges, a few cars. And so now we have all this federal money coming in with cooperation from the state, Haima uh, and the local folks and they're all working together and it's ma amazing. So it is possible, but you just have to kind of work those relationships and aloha everybody. And um, yeah, it, it, it is, it's the only, the only uh, party that is not being very cooperative, I think is the mortgage company. Uh, and they're like, where's this money coming from? Or how do we know that we're gonna get our money back? And this is like, it's federal money. Please let us put it forward into making this asset more valuable for you. Uh, so that that's uh, there's very the, the obstruction is not coming from the, the federal, state, or the county. It's coming from these other folks. So it's not using county lands that for this. Not in this case, but I can also okay. borrow something from uh, Simon Russell's campaign, which I helped out last last round. He wanted to uh, develop uh, housing for teachers, housing for farmers near near the farms, housing for teachers. Uh, on county land, perhaps there's some near the airport. I don't know if you want to live by the airport. Uh, <laughs> so there, the county can, uh, yeah, we need to prioritize. Uh, there are certain essential things. If you can't uh, find a doctor, if you can't find a teacher for your students, uh, this economy, our, our culture is just going to go on a downward spiral. Great. Thank Great. you. Thank you for your Thank answers. You. Thank you, our next question will come from Bruce Douglas. Hey, Aram. Um, I'm going to bounce off the last question, and we talked uh, and talk about the homeless situation. Mm. Not just affordable housing, but the homelessness is on the increase and rise. And what would you do in order to solve that issue if you were elected? Yeah, we need to decriminalize homelessness. Um, I've, I've, uh, within the last couple of months, I've uh, spent a couple of nights camping in my car. Um, and it's scary. Like, where where I, it, where can you do that safely? We also have this issue of all the camper vans and uh, folks parking outside the road, and it becoming a, a real big nuisance on the east side. Uh, so it's kind of a wild west situation uh, where uh, it's it's not safe uh, to be to be camping. When I, when my mom first moved to Maui, we landed on we didn't land on McKenna Beach, but we ended up camping on McKenna Beach initially. Um, so I think there's uh, better, more humane management of what it, what you can do uh, when you're unhoused. Um, I wouldn't mind just being in my hammock, but some folks and some folks uh, might want more than a hammock to sleep in. Um, but uh, the the whole clearing of the homeless situation, like the Kanaha Beach Park, got cleared out um, with COVID, and then the folks were pushed down. There, there, that area was nasty, anyways. Uh, that it's just not humane. And so uh, we need to bring people into the system and give them uh, avenues to, to kind of elevate their, their lot in life. Here's something that um, it's, it's actually two ideas. Uh, one from my, my favorite mayor, Jamie Lerner from, from Curitiba in Brazil. He created a currency around recycling. So you'd, you'd bring in your recycling and you'd bus tokens. Uh, and then uh, George Kahumoku Jr. wants to turn uh, these rec cars that are abandoned into bitcoins like a currency uh, and so either way we're taking waste and turning it into a resource and we're we're giving folks who don't have uh, 
access to other jobs or better jobs, a way of creating uh, upward mobility. Ways of getting that, around. Uh, yeah. Words yeah. with jobs, uh, employment, of course, is the big uh, concern of most working people. Yeah. And a diversified economy is important. And uh, how would you diversify the economy and make a better situation for employment for our citizens on Maui? Thank you, Bruce. I love this question. Um, I want to introduce the concept of the biocultural restoration economy. I don't know if that word is out in the, the ether or the, the internet sphere enough. Biocultural restoration really is just talking about um, remediating the land uh, in ways that are with respect to indigenous culture. So biocultural restoration. Um, it's, and when I, so when I, when I drive uh, like from Kahului to Paia, you see all that land that's not being cared for. Is my video okay? Are, are you guys, is, is everything okay? Just checking in. It's a little yeah. jerky, but it looks like your bandwidth is low, but we can still hear you. Okay, okay. All right, we'll just go with just it. Just don't move around too much and it'll be all right. All right, I was noticing the lag. Um, yeah, so the biocultural restoration economy. I, I work as a volunteer on projects because I'm passionate about the environment, uh, but I don't think we should be relying solely on volunteers to take care of the environment. Um, I look at all the folks doing land care, uh, yard work, tree trimming. That is a potentially a, a type of work that could be uh, shifted into more restorative work. Um, there's a lack of, um, there's, there's, there's a lack of uh, fruit and coconuts. So food security is a big, is a big issue, but uh, so I was talking to Manu Meyer uh, about uh, food sovereignty and her big issue is um, respect for the coconut. Uh, it's, if you go to newnow.org, N-I-U-N-A-O-W.org, uh, we need to work on getting our coconuts in our county parks uh that are well maintained well trimmed and safe so people don't send in the trees and get hit by coconuts we can protect them from being hit by coconuts um but looking at um yeah how do how do we take all this workforce that's being uh sometimes just used to to do weed whacking and help uh, maybe convert that into food growing so I, I would love to see our county parks grow more food Thank you. I don't know if I've so uh, actually so Bruce, I wasn't sure if I, I should bring this up, but my if 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 my if my whether my however my campaign is going, uh, my my startup is around um, vocational training for the 21st century, uh, and so I want to I want to train our kids uh, how to be knowledge workers. We have a lot of folks uh, who come, we just need to make that skill set. Uh, more, more tuned here, more, uh, you need to put more training. I want to uh, mahalo uh, the late Harold Miller, Dr. Harold Miller. Uh, he set up a lab at Seabury at first, where I got to um, see what they were doing with computer graphics. And then the My High Performance Computing Center, I got to Okay, we are having a little technical difficulty here, uh, yeah. Aram, but I don't know, I don't see how we can continue because uh, we don't even have audio with you right now. Aram. I don't know if you could hear me. Uh, so Aram, we're going to have to end it here at this time. Uh, we'll look at what we have and then we can add on to that later if we see a need to do that. Okay.